Well, I got some insulation cut and in, put in the floor, a little stick on time, brackets mounted. Up front, got the core support installed. Much harder than it looks, but still not terrible. Uh, so I'm tighten the bolts on this side. But where I'm at is uh, putting the AC coils and uh, the little the way it bolts on is with the radiator brackets and uh, they use the same bolt so it gets rid of the clip nut and uh, goes through. And so I threw the radiator back on there so I can do it all at once and the radiator is not wide. As the uh, as the core support, so I need a wider radiator. Probably could make some brackets, but then I'm gonna fit with the standoff right here. So I had planned on getting a bigger radiator anyway at some point. Might as well be now. So. But that's where we're at. I did a little cleaning up. You know, cleaning up, touched up the paint just where I'm working. I think I decided I'm going to do the bottom of the truck later. But I did take the road outside, pressure wash everything, degrees to under the hood. <coughs> cleaned it up, touched up the paint everywhere I'm not going to be able to get to later. Took the battery tray out, painted it. It's hanging out there drying. But uh, I'm going to go water me a bigger radiator when we reach over here to the mounts it's part of the uh, part of the install is to open this up see on this guy this opening this is the old one is a lot smaller this uh if you have this one it tells you to cut it to about right here to come on around to give it more more of an opening to get more air through the air condition which is uh, kind of odd because AC coils don't take up the hole, all of the hole. But whatever. So the new one had to had to write dimensions as if I would have already as if I would have cut it. It's just a big one. Fits the V8 uh, style truck. So it uh, has a bigger radiator. So I guess I need to go uh, start looking up radiator numbers and uh, get me a uh, one that fits a V8 truck. <laughs> that one to be wide enough. I'll probably just go get a uh, go get the uh, aftermarket aluminum ones. I forget the name of the. Uh, I think it was Champion or something. I bought them before. A lot better radiator, a lot better cost than the original. You know, they're, they're, only a couple hundred bucks and they uh, work really good. I've installed several on several hot rods. But I'll measure that up, get that going, and then then we'll just continue on. But new core support makes a world of difference. Hey, side note. Right here on the core support and the inner fender. Inner fender goes under this part. Looks like it goes on top when you're putting it in. It looks like it's just cut to fit right over the top. And it'll fit. But then these bolts won't line up. So uh, it's gotta go under. You know, after taking it off and putting it on three or four times, trying to figure that out. Figure I'd let you know. <laughs> Fun stuff. All right. Radiator's next. Got some coils on and the first hard line. The cardboard's just protected uh, from messing around with the radiator. I ordered a uh, proper radiator. It goes all the way to the bolts. The uh, I don't know what this one is, but it uh, it's definitely aftermarket and it don't go with this truck. It's a, I mean it works, but. 
I ordered a champion radiator aluminum all aluminum so uh and it's got the inlet over here and in all in the right spots and everything and uh yeah should, should work great our prices ads so what I'm doing now is I'm about to change the pulley on the uh, front of the engine and I should have done that before I put yesterday morning all this was wide open I could have changed it easily then <laughs> should have done it then but oh well so if you get to that step you know go while you got all this apart I think I'm gonna go ahead and yank the radiator back out just because I had it in there I put it in there just to kind of hold everything in place see how it fits as I put the coils on but uh but the new one should uh, get here about Wednesday or so and uh and I'll just drop it in at that point but I don't need the old radiator any for my assembly anymore it kind of went together pretty good a little com confusing but uh, first because it's this is my first air condition I've never worked on an air condition before so and in here I got to the step to install the dryer and the notes in the instructions say don't connect it until you're uh, ready to vacuum the system and everything. So I haven't installed it yet, but uh, definitely not going to connect it until I get ready to take it down and get it uh, vacuumed and charged. The uh, It goes underneath the fender, which is kind of disappointing. I wanted it in the hood. Uh, well... It's not like I'm going off-roading or anything, so I guess it'll be all right underneath there. And uh, we'll go from there. Also, uh, skipping around in the instructions, so uh, I got to the point to install it, and I hadn't installed the bracket yet, so I had to backtrack and figure out where that was because moved around a little bit waiting on some parts. But, uh, you know, pretty good. All right, we made some progress, but check this out. <laughs> Finally raining. 108, 110, something like that. Just feels like hot water falling. But anyway, so got the compressor installed bracket installed that went together pretty good a little confusing trying to get the adjustment arm in the right holes in the right direction uh, change the bottom pulley uh, belts just on here it ain't tight yet just laying there now the belt's just gonna go here to here the kit doesn't come with a belt it tells you what size belt to buy but doesn't come with one I think the kit should come with one just my opinion I, uh, let's see, got the new radiator on order, it's got a spacer goes behind here, it kicks this out so it lines up with the, the new pulley, questionable, if this gets a spacer to line up with that, so that everything lines up with this, and we didn't adjust this at all, is this now out of alignment? Maybe. Space was pretty thin, probably not enough to make any that big a difference anyway. Oh, look at that. Everything's getting wet. Ducks like it. Everybody else is hiding. So, I went ahead and pulled the radiator and the condenser back off. It was too easy to do that. And uh, so I can work on all this and get to it a little better. While I had it off, squared it, cleaned up and squared a little paint on the uh, covers there. 
is light blue. It's not the correct color blue, but uh, I know it will annoy the Ford guys. So that's you know that's just a bonus. It just happened to be the color of a spray can I had, so I just used it. And uh, so it started the wiring. Circuit breaker here next to the battery. Wires coming through that little grommet there. Hoses routed. Out there, they're not hooked up on the outside yet, but they're going through the hole. And the wire coming down through here. So we got this closeout panel. The relay and the wiring harness kind of shoved through the grommet. Everything, so uh, that's where we're at now. I think the next step is start to put the uh, rest of the unit inside properly. I think that's what's next. I need to put the dryer and bracket on. It goes underneath that fender in, down in there somewhere. And, uh, and just keep on trucking. All right. Cool. All right, it's been a long day, but there's more parts on the truck than there is on the table, so that's a good sign. Woo. All right, now this inside part was a freaking beast. I'm not completely done yet either. The, uh, that might not arise. Getting that unit to fit up in there is a monster. Tight spots. I still need to mount the ECU. It's going behind the dash right there. Those hoses are, ooh, those are tight. Getting the brackets on the back and mount, then shoving it up into that hole with one of the AC hoses connected and then connecting the other after. Wiring harness is all in the way, and this little bracket instructions are kind of confusing. If you do this one, the little clip nuts or U nuts that they call it, they don't go on this, they go on the bracket. You put the bracket in one hole so you can use it as a pattern to drill these two holes, and you take it back off, put the clip nuts on, put it over the top, then screw it in. Using instructions once it's done, it's done, but uh, man, it was not easy. Seems easy, not not that easy. I may just be out of practice, but uh, it's coming together. Not a lot of parts left. I think my next step is the controls. I still got I gotta level it, level it, and tighten all the mounting bolts so it says to mount it far and aft and side to side the way it drains proper so uh that'll be my next stop then mounting that ecu back there and i've skipped the part of terminating wires and and stuff because i wanted to get everything in first so that i can terminate the wires and make sure i don't cut them too short i can get everything adjusted and tied in and it fits better but uh heater hose little hard pipes for the heater hose man what a nightmare getting those onto the back of the thing they they're little short pipes and they screw on to the back of the unit and then come around the hole but they fit behind the bracket and it's a uh, it's a tight fit of course the nut the nut to tighten those pipes is a uh, inch and an eighth so you get this giant wrench trying to get in a spot where it bar the nut barely fits there's no way you can get the wrench on it uh, it's just it was hard, but it's done. It's not impossible. But uh, that's where we're at for today. And uh, yeah, I think I'll. Uh, I think I'm gonna go eat something. Then I'll come back and I'll level that and um, mount the ECU and then call it a day. So. Uh, it's getting dark. I think I put in 12 hours on this beast today. So, eh, not bad. It's freaking hot today. Glad it rained, finally. 
All right, see you later. All right, still working on this old truck. The uh, getting the air conditioning in. One of the next steps was to uh, route the lines underneath the passenger fender and get the dryer installed. It connects to the bolts that hold the fender on, and I took the fenders off to get a little access and see what was going on underneath. So, while I had them off, I'm going to clean them up a little bit. This is what they look like underneath. You know, a lot of, a lot of corrosion from you know driving on the beach and in the sand. I cleaned a ton of salty sand out from under here from beach wear. You see all the rust under there. Looks like someone's repaired already. Has started uh started sanding on this just see just see what it looks like and there's some bondo actually on the inside yeah uh, let me flip it over you know so you know this is the big yuck spot on the outside of that one that's the uh driver's side this is the passenger or passenger side so i uh cleaned it up you know it's still ugly it's got some holes all, all the way through so i put some fiberglass on it Gonna smooth it out, throw some primer on it, call it good enough until I get around to replacing the fenders. You know, don't if uh, everybody likes to oh it's a bondo bucket, a bondo bucket, whatever. You know, I'm not doing I'm not slapping bondo on it to sell it. I'm just getting the yucky off of it and I'm gonna drive it around. Okay. It's not a it's not a for sale truck, it's a daily driver. I'm eventually gonna buy new fenders. But, you know, finish this air condition first and get all that, you know. But, while I got them off, I'm going to do some cleanup. You know, knock that down. Slap some fiberglass on it. That way it's not as ugly. And then, uh, you know, I'm not even going to top coat it. I'm going to fiberglass it, smooth it out, prime it. And uh, that's where it's going to stay. The, uh... But that's why what I'm working on today, and then I'll uh, get back on the. You know, I'll have these back on by tonight, and start putting the uh, rest of the air conditioning together. <laughs> Here's your beach sand. Yeah, that's why it's so corroded. That is sand straight from the beach, packed in behind the scan and underneath that support. <laughs> that's funny. Ooh, that's ugly. But I am planning on changing the fender like I've been saying, so uh, no biggie. And that's why, because uh, man, that's ugly. That little drain hole, once it gets clogged up with mud and salty shit, just stacks up in there. It just goes to town. Looked like it had some Bondo on it to repair at one time, you know, probably before the last repaint. And, uh, you know, it just didn't last because they didn't do anything about the backside. I mean, the backside is painted and it, and it had some Bondo on the backside, but it's, they didn't do anything about the the underlying problem of this filling up with gunk and not draining out so uh yeah i'm just gonna weld in a quick patch panel sloppy ugly job and uh slap some fiberglass bondo on it and throw some primer on it and that's how i'm gonna drive it until i get around to getting the uh getting some new fenders new fenders uh current price is uh just over 200 bucks a piece, but they're on back order. And uh, so I am uh, hadn't ordered any yet. I'm gonna finish doing this air conditioning job first. And then I got some uh, engine stuff I wanna do first. And then I'll get around to doing the fenders. Cause hey, I'm not that concerned. I just, I am gonna get under the rest of the truck, you know, from the cab forward. I know what's rusty and I've changed the parts I'm concerned about. You know, mainly the uh, radiator core support, these fender corners. I know what I got to do there. Got a little bit of repair on the bottom of one of the doors, probably both doors if I take the paint off of it. But uh, from the cab back, I'm going to get under there and clean all this crap out of there and make sure there's no hidden sand or salt left over. But uh, yeah, a little more drying to do. 
but I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And then we'll get back on the air condition. Well, since it looked like it was trying to create its own drain hole right there, we went ahead and helped it out and just cut that out. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to hit this with some rust reformer, leave the hole in the structure, tack a little piece on there, and uh, cover it up. And then uh, when the new fenders get here, I'll just swap the whole thing. But yeah, that's that, that's pretty yucky. On the, and that's the structure for the fender. I mean, it's not the structure for the truck. It's just that fender. But that's what keeps that fender from flopping. So uh, get that on there. You know, it looked good enough for a daily driver. But uh, we all know it's got a big rust hole underneath. So uh, yeah, get new fenders on it soon. All right, it's damn near winter time. It's only like 85 degrees and 55% humidity. So, uh, this was the really bad fender. And, uh, you know, I cut out, cut out the hole and uh, welded it in. One thing is a constant, I suck at body work. So, uh, you know, but hey, I guess it's not terrible for a uh, temporary patch job. This is the, uh, the other side that wasn't near as bad, but uh, I put some fiberglass filler and then I, uh, I had painted it and the paint never dried. I guess it was a bad can. It was the wrong color anyway. It was just what I had laying around probably a year old been sitting in the heat in the shop and uh i think i put it on before the primer had dried and uh it just got all gummy and so i cleaned all that off and it was showing some lines anyway so i skimmed it with a little bit of body filler you know so uh yeah it uh not terrible but so i'm still going to replace the fenders but just so you know this is how quick someone can make a rusty car look decent. You know, the uh, the welding and the bodywork is definitely an art form, and I'm I suck at welding on stuff that thin. I just got I think the pro main problem is I got no patience, but I can paint. I can squirt paint pretty good, but uh, I'm just out of patience for the uh, all the prep and all the all your all your best painting is in the prep, you know. So you don't have to be a great paint shooter if you're a good paint prepper. If you do good prep, you're gonna have good paint. That's where all the time is. The actual paint job. You know, that's one day, even for a really, really nice paint job. That's one day. It's the months of prep to get it ready for that one day is where all the action is. But this is just temporary. I am going to change the fenders because they're pretty nasty on the other side. And, uh, you know, I don't want right in corners with some bondo in the corners on a good fender and they're cheap enough that oops cheap enough that it ain't gonna break the bank just to replace them <laughs> but since i had them off anyway doing this air condition might as well fix these corners so it don't look terrible you know because there's two kinds of rust there's a really cool dry patina rust like those babies right there and then there's that cancerous stuff like was in these fenders but uh hey you know a couple of patches on these corners and it ain't bad so let's see what all i've got done on the air conditioning because i've kind of been going back and forth so i got in here i got the uh radio back in and i got the controls in just finished doing that got all the uh 
the inside unit, the uh, evaporator is installed, hoses are ran, wiring harness kind of laying there. You know, I think next step is to finish up all that wiring harness and then uh, put the dash back together. Out here, got the hoses ran across under the fender. The dryer can goes there. I'm kind of waiting on that because it uses the same bolts that hold the fender on. And the radiator are to be in in the next couple of days that I ordered. And then I'll throw the uh, condenser back on it. Go back through there. So the uh, compressor's mounted. Pick up the fan belt tomorrow. Get the wiring for the... Uh, these go to the battery. That's uh, the grounds and the positive. Uh, comes through here. Got to clean all that up. Get that in there nice and tidy. But uh, that's where I'm at on it so far. But uh, kind of waiting. Next day, I want to put the radiator in before I put, put the condenser on. It's just easier that way. And then I'll uh, start putting all the rest of this together. Can't wait to throw the grill and everything back on it. As I got those new headlights, I want to see how they look. But uh, I'll throw the fenders on first. I'm ready to put the other one on. Well, I just sprayed that primer, so. I'll put those on tomorrow, let it give it primer a day to dry, and maybe, I don't know. Might get antsy and throw them on right now, who knows. But that's where I'm at. Hey, side note, if I planned on flipping this sucker and, uh, you know, not telling anybody their fenders were full of Bondo, I wouldn't be putting it on video and posting it. So, uh, Spinners will be changed. It's not a Bondo bucket. That's just a. Gonna get it driving. Gonna use the. Uh, what does Freiburger say? Don't get it right, just get it running. It's already running. I just want air conditioning while I have the fenders off. Gonna see if I can't get them uh, a little better. Well, not bad. <laughs> now there's no shims in that fender spacing and it may not be like show car straight but uh that's pretty damn straight That little patch didn't come out too terrible. So, uh, now you can see the bubbles in the door skin where we got the same trouble. But, uh, I don't know. I'm scared to open that can of worms because my welding sucks so bad. And I know that I'm going to need to cut the bottom piece off of there and weld a new one on. And, uh, I just don't want to do it. I'm probably just gonna take the door panel off and treat the inside and paint it real good and yeah, probably leave it till it gets way worse and I practice a lot on welding and then reskin it. I don't know. But new fenders are definitely in order and uh eh, but not terrible till that time comes. Alright.